Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Clarendon Police investigating fatal shooting in Tollgate. NHT to begin work on over 15,000 housing solutions in the next fiscal year. And major crimes down in St. Mary. Thank you for joining us. I'm Carrie Ann Simpson. Here are the details. The Clarendon police are investigating a shooting in Tollgate last night. According to head of the Clarendon police, Superintendent Carlos Russell, persons were gathered at a nine night when hoodlum struck. About 8.45 p.m. here along the Tollgate main road, a nine night was in progress when gunmen would have shot and injured three persons. One has since succumbed. He is one Michael Bessier. He is from the United Kingdom and is here to attend his brother's funeral. As for the other two persons who were injured in the incident, Superintendent Russell says they are being treated at hospital. Their injuries are not considered life-threatening. He's appealing to anyone with information to report it to the police. No motive has been established for the killing. A man and his five-year-old nephew are dead following a two-vehicle collision along Fullerswood Road in St. Elizabeth yesterday. A third person has been hospitalized. According to reports, Jaswain Rowe was transporting his five-year-old nephew, Christopher Gallimore, home from Santa Cruz Prep when he attempted to overtake a vehicle and crashed into a pickup traveling in the opposite direction. They were taken to the Black River Hospital where the boy and Mr. Rowe died while undergoing treatment. The driver of the pickup was treated and admitted. This is the 11th road fatality in St. Elizabeth since the start of the year. We go now to the National Stadium for the Class 3 boys at 200 meters semifinals. They will be doubling. They'll be either doing the 2-4 or the 1-2 double. And so they'll meet at the 200 meters. Uh, but, uh, you know, as I mentioned, and I think it's important to make the distinction that the track events, the official word is no, won't resume until 2. But there's also no confirmation that it will be the 200 that resumes the track event. So... The 200 won't be run until the earliest two, but it could actually be later as well, depending on what track event they decide to, to start back with here. So that's causing the delay, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to get more word, um, I'm sure, on the official reason for the delay, but we've been able to spot from where we are that it looks like some reinforcement has been added to the start area where the blocks would be placed for the 200 right. meters. And so that here, there we have it. That may need some time now to get set so that it's not loose, loose. when the, the, the pegs from the blocks are yeah. sunk into uh, the, 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 yeah. the synthetic surface here at the National Stadium. And this particular track was relayed in 20, 2011, I believe it was. Yes, 2011. 2011, the blue track was laid down here at the National Stadium. And Jordan, you're aware now that the... The World, World Athletics is saying that you must get the track certified after a particular time. And that ruling came up maybe about two months ago. So maybe after every five years, the track must be certified. After or recertified. Or recertified yeah, after I a particular time. And we can All right, when that race is ready, we'll actually go back to it. Continuing the news. The National Housing Trust, NHT, is to begin work on just over 15,000 housing solutions in the next fiscal year. Prime Minister Andrew Holness made the announcement in his budget, in his budget presentation on Thursday. These 15,000 houses comprise 4,309 two-bedroom solutions priced at an average below $13 million. And Madam Speaker, if you're coming to the market with $13 million, that's a reasonably very good price for a two-bedroom solution. 7,600 one-bedroom units priced at an average of $10 million. Madam Speaker, that is 
for the price. And Madam Speaker, we will provide 3,100 service lots priced below $4 million. In the meantime, the NHT will be revising its first step housing program by developing one-bedroom apartment complexes near urban centers. ...will be made available to contributors via sale agreement with an optional buyback clause. The buyback clause will give mortgagers the option to sell the property back to the NHT after a determined time. The trust may repurchase the unit for sale to its contributors. The mortgagers who sell their unit to the NHT under this arrangement will be allowed to access a new benefit from the NHT in full towards the acquisition of a new home. 14 homeless shelters will also be built in partnership with the local government ministry. The St. Mary, well, Mary continues to see a reduction in major crimes. Acting head of the parish, Superintendent Kevin Francis, says since the start of the year, the parish has recorded 13 murders. That's a reduction of two compared to the similar period last year. However, he, he notes that sexual offenses remain a problem. Based on our records and the last circuit court report, over 50% of the matters presented treated with sexual offenses. When compared to other parishes, St. Mary is almost leading all the time when it comes to sexual offenses. And if we can't see something wrong with that, then something is seriously happening with us. A call for Jamaicans to be more empathetic amid growing concerns about how persons with mental health issues are treated. The matter was discussed at a Rotary Club off Mandeville meeting in Manchester. Krista Campbell reports. The mental health issues affecting young people continue to cause concern for professionals in that field of medicine. Effective treatment is available for many of the conditions. Depression can be treated quite successfully. Up to 90% of persons do well, return to their normal function. There are some others, there's a third of persons perhaps with psychotic disorders who may not return to their normal functioning, but can be brought to a place where they can function at their best. For the Southern Regional Health Authority, SRHA, mental health problems among youngsters are even more concerning since a student of a tertiary institution in Manchester took her life recently. Rotary Club of Mandeville President Jennifer Barrett shared a concern of another mother who recently approached her. To say that her daughter is wearing a mask all the time because she thinks she's ugly, she doesn't want to show her face. Regional psychiatrist at the SRHA, Dr. Doris Garvey, laments that many persons with mental health problems do not want to seek professional help. They would prefer to see their general doctor or the people in the community. So what the Ministry of Health has been doing, or we have embarked on a program called Problem Management Plus, where persons in the community are trained to recognize some of the mental health associated issues and can be point persons, support persons to intervene, whether it is to direct individuals to where they can get help and so minimizing things escalating into crises. But while work continues to train more citizens on how to identify and appropriately respond to persons with mental health challenges, she notes a little empathy to what seems like basic problems can go a far way. Many people reach out, you know, but we turn a blind eye. We don't have the time. That a foolishness. We belittle people. We don't think that the fact that somebody says, I am sad or I am having problems because my girlfriend just left me. Man, you feel man up. Krista Campbell, TVJ News. It's time for a break. Stay with us. More stories when we read news. Mayor of Kingston, Andrew Swaby, says seven markets in the corporate area have been earmarked for renovation. Work is scheduled to begin in the coming weeks. 
A team from the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation, KSAMC, to include Kingston's new mayor, Andrew Swaby, toured market facilities in the corporate area on Wednesday. The Coronation and Crossroads markets were stops on the tour. When asked about issues with the facilities, poor sanitary conveniences topped the Crossroads vendors' list. Down there is very bad. Very bad. They came to dry it yesterday, but it, it's very bad. Valda, who has been a vendor there for 15 years, says this has been the state for as long as she can remember. I do remember when, but it's a good while. It is being like this. You talk, you talk, you talk. It's no better. Because sometimes it smells very high. Worse when it's flooding out. So it flood out so, well? Yes. It's yesterday they come and draw it. In video footage sent to TVJ News from the KSAMC, Mr. Swaby agreed that the condition of some of the restrooms was too bad to show or describe on television, but promises to take remedial action. We look at the sanitary convenience in these two markets, and we're happy to report that we'll be fixing seven markets, the downtown market plus this one, the sanitary convenience. Mr. Swaby, who has been a long-standing counselor of the KSAMC, says now that he is chairman, the problem will be addressed. He says $25 million will be allocated for the repairs. Mr. Swaby was sworn in as mayor in early March after a 2020 tie in the number of councillors elected for the two major parties in last month's local government election. The PNP was given the chairmanship based on having the most votes in the corporate area. When asked about a timeline for the repairs, Mr. Swaby noted that the municipal corporation will be setting up its committees in early April, after which paperwork for projects will be worked on. But what I can see, the tenant process have started, the procurement process have started already. And so when, the, when we have that, then shortly after, we have come. so I would think about by the first week in, in May, we should be get cracking in terms of doing the actual work. Business operators and motorists are again calling for a permanent solution to address the flooding on Ward Avenue in Mandeville. After less than an hour of moderate rainfall on Thursday, the roadway was again flooded. This ambulance was slowed by flood waters as it made its way to the hospital. And there's no change to it. I mean, uh, I'm going to see this place here has to do some work. If you notice, to build a barrel. But that doesn't stop the place from flooding. If you look through the gate, you'll see the extent of it. Yes. Water, level of water. Yes. The body of water that is here at this moment. So, I don't see the changes. I think they would have done something by now. It's time now for the Business Minute. Jamaica Brunner's Group is considering additional investments for the company. This comes after selling its hatchery located in the American Midwest for $23 million U.S. million. The Jamaica Brunner's Group says this new venture would be in the same line of business, just at a different location on the east coast of the United States. Jamaica Brawlers Group President and CEO Christopher Levy says the sale is geared towards a more efficient, vertically integrated operation. Jamaica Brawlers still owns another hatchery in Pennsylvania and may either expand it or buy another one. The Jamaican company is exiting the hatchery in Iowa at a gain after eight years of ownership, having acquired it for U.S. $8 million from Welp Incorporated in March 2016 through subsidiary International Poultry Breeders Hatcheries Incorporated. Further afield, the Joe Biden administration this week finalized a key piece of its ambitious climate agenda. This is a new tailpipe rule for passenger cars and trucks that will decisively push the U.S. auto market toward electric vehicles and hybrids within the next decade. But getting automakers and American drivers on board remains a challenge. A top concern for car buyers, according to Consumer Reports, access to public chargers. While electric vehicle sales soared in 2023, they still didn't meet market expectations. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Shane Masters. Time now for the top regional and international stories. In the region, a missionary flight's international plane, helping with evacuations from Haiti, landed in South Florida with seven passengers on Thursday. Earlier this week, they flew another 15 people into Fort Pierce. Those who fled the troubled Caribbean state say they are feeling safer and relieved to be in South Florida. 
Missionary International, a non-profit Christian organization, has been helping the people of Haiti for 60 years but has had challenges since the escalation of violence. On the international scene, Delhi Chief Minister was arrested by the Federal Anti-Money Laundering Agency. It's a move condemned by the opposition as the murder of democracy. The Chief Minister was arrested Thursday night in connection with corruption allegations relating to the city's liquor policy. This comes just weeks before the country heads into national elections. And the U.S. Border Patrol declared a border situation is now under control after a large group of migrants breached the Texas National Guard barricades on Thursday. Additional personnel have been deployed to the area. The circumstances that led to the incident are still unclear. According to a statement, U.S. Border Patrol continues to monitor the situation. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Hal Shane Burke. And that's the Midday News. I'm Karian Simpson. Join us at 7 for primetime news. 